This video is a more detailed explanation of the law that applies to physical GPS tracking devices. I'm going to focus especially on the Supreme Court's 2012 opinion in United States against Jones. If you haven't yet watched the main lectures on cell phone tracking, I would strongly recommend viewing those first. Let me begin by clarifying the technology. In these cases, the police have physically attached a tracking device to a suspect's vehicle. They're quite inexpensive now and smaller than a pack of cards. Usually, the device is surreptitiously installed, such as under a bumper or in a wheel well. Once the device is attached, it keeps track of its location. And therefore, as the suspect drives around, the device keeps track of the suspect's location. That location can be very precise, on the order of meters. With some cheap models, the police have to go collect the device to learn where the suspect has traveled. Almost all modern tracking devices, however, include some way of transmitting the suspect's location, such as a cellular modem or a less sophisticated radio. Police can then track the suspect's vehicle in real time, as well as retain a location history. So, the major legal question surrounding these practices is, does the Fourth Amendment cover GPS tracking devices? As I hope you recall, when thinking through the Fourth Amendment status of a law enforcement practice, you have to ask two questions. You have to first look for a search or a seizure. And then, if either occurred, you have to ask whether the search or seizure was reasonable. Most of the litigation surrounding GPS trackers has focused on that initial step. And specifically, it has emphasized two questions. First, is physically installing a tracking device a Fourth Amendment search? Second, is collecting a person's movements a Fourth Amendment search? Put differently, could the Constitution's privacy protections be triggered by slapping a gadget behind a bumper? Or could they be triggered by the location information that the gadget sends? In the old legal view, before the Jones decision, the answer to the first question was generally no. Physically installing a device was just not enough of a physical intrusion to count as a Fourth Amendment search. The majority answer to the second question was also no, at least not in public, because of the public movement doctrine from Knotts and Caro. As I hope you recall from the lectures on cell phone tracking, the conventional reading of those cases is that a person does not inherently have a reasonable expectation of privacy in their public movements. I should note that there was a small but vocal and growing minority on the second question. Some courts believed collecting a person's movements could be a Fourth Amendment search if the tracking were sufficiently precise and protracted. The D.C. Circuit adopted that view in the Jones case, in fact, before it reached the Supreme Court. I think it's fair to say that courts are increasingly moving in that direction, and these issues are still playing out in the courts in the context of cell phone tracking. All right, so that was the constitutional status of tracking devices before Jones. Let me touch on the statutory law. The Electronic Communications Privacy Act has special tracking device provisions. They clarify that these gadgets aren't covered by the Wiretap Act, the Stored Communications Act, or the Pen Register Act. Those provisions also anticipated the need for tracking device warrants, in some situations, such as where a vehicle might enter private property off the public roads. So, let me recap the majority legal view in the courts before the Supreme Court handed down Jones. Under the Electronic Communications Privacy Act and the Federal Rules of Criminal Procedure, judges could issue tracking device warrants. Those warrants were not constitutionally required, however, so long as a vehicle stayed on public roads. ECPA didn't impose a tracking warrant requirement either. 
Then came United States against Jones. The facts were hardly ideal for the government. The FBI had applied for and received a tracking device warrant, but it exceeded time and geographical limits imposed by the warrant. Put differently, the FBI installed the tracking device after the warrant had expired and outside the geographical area covered by the warrant. So, five justices on the Supreme Court voted that physically installing a GPS tracker on a car is a Fourth Amendment search. That surprised a lot of observers, since the physical intrusion is so minor. In fact, Jones has been widely read to reinvigorate that old mode of Fourth Amendment thinking from before cats, where physical intrusions greatly mattered. Four justices on the Supreme Court would have held that collecting a person's movements can be a Fourth Amendment search, at least over an extended period of time. Justice Sotomayor, the swing vote, somewhat suggested that she shares that view, but she disposed of the case on the easier physical intrusion issue. I want to be very precise about what the Supreme Court held in Jones. The issue was whether there is a search, not whether a warrant is required. Remember, those are two separate questions under the Fourth Amendment. Well, it shouldn't come as much surprise that after Jones, lower courts have imposed the default warrant requirement. So, in the wake of Jones, a warrant is clearly required to install a GPS tracker. There's some debate over how far the Jones opinion went on location privacy. One reading, by far the most common reading, is that the Jones opinion is only about physical installation of a gadget. And absent that physical installation, the law is unchanged. Knotts and Caro and the public movement doctrine may still be good law, that's why I didn't focus on Jones in the main lectures. It's widely read as a one-off, dealing solely with physical tracking gadgets. Another reading, which is much less widely adopted by scholars in courts, is that other forms of location tracking are covered by analogy. The physical and technical details of how tracking is accomplished just shouldn't really matter. Again, that's not the common reading of Jones. Okay, so here's the punchline on GPS tracking devices and United States against Jones. Since that decision in 2012, installing hardware that tracks a person's location is clearly a Fourth Amendment search. Lower courts have subsequently ruled that a warrant is usually required. At present, however, using software that tracks location may not be covered by the Fourth Amendment. That's the mess surrounding cell phone tracking that I tried to explain in the main lectures.